Manzi Shalita gets a right foot on it. Ball still live. Foley just outside the six. <laughs> finds the back of the net. In the 90th minute, Lynchburg converts and takes the 1 0 lead. 10 seconds and counting. Sent at the six. Off the top of the post. Ricochet. Oh, Gallagher. It's gone in as well. Has it hit off his hand and finds the back corner. CNU does the unthinkable, ties this game up one apiece. Wigboldy will cross once again. Grady in the area. Dombrovskis with the left foot, converts! And Lynchburg will take on Bridgewater in the semifinals. When it comes to playing keep away, that's a very valuable asset. It's Kenny Robles, a valuable asset in his own right. Left footer, count it! They'll say last touch by a Hornet. Thrown will come from Kyle May, senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, and it looks like right off the bat you've got Randolph in a 4-2-3-1. So they're playing this double pivot right here in the middle, looking to play a little bit more of a like ticky-tack possession type game, as well as clog that spot up. Well, and playing a possession style has been a strength of Lynchburg all year long, and it feels like this snowball effect. Once Lynchburg starts to get some momentum and some shots off, it feels impossible to get them out of the attacking third. So a battle of strength on strength today. Yep. Shalita looking ahead for Trevor Miller, taking over that spot for Brennan Lagana. And it's Justin Ennis stepping up and booting it away. Hard to see in that sun. It's right, right there in your face when the ball's coming at you from that angle. And we're talking about the back line and which side can make enough plays. That's been one of the strongest areas. We talked about just five shots on goal out over the last six games. And a ton of credit has to go to Seth Dale with it now. And beside him, Griffin Phillips, Nick Foley, grad student, and a staple of the defensive side for Lynchburg. And, of course, reigning first-team all-conference member Joey Daly in a left-back role. And that's what you're hoping for again today. You know, limit the shots at all possible. And on the other side, the center backs for Randolph, Hordy and Dembo, and Wade Hall, sophomore and senior respectively. They will certainly have their workload cut out for them today. Two teams headed back and forth. One of these guys got to get on the ground. And a roll all the way out to Ben Grease. Knocked off the ball. They're going to award possession to Lynchburg. And it's a hometown battle, therefore, strong fan attendance for both these sides. And you just heard the Wildcats faithful, voicing their displeasure with that last call. Yeah. Randolph comes away with possession regardless. Yeah, and that was uh, one of those 50-50, like, who touched it last, whoever picks up the ball first gets the throw. And you're already hearing the fans play a factor three minutes in the contest. Can't wait to see where we are in the 88th, 89th, and 90th minute. Yeah, it seemed like when the ball got into our defensive third here, they were automatically just, ah, <laughs> even though no one really touched it. The all-time season series, 16-2-3 Lynchburg holds the advantage over Randolph. And the last time Lynchburg lost to the Wildcats, 10 years ago in the ODAC championship game when Randolph won their one and only program tournament title it's crazy to see that play out again I mean here we are so Wildcats fans you're hoping history repeats itself Lynchburg looking to write a different script rolled all the way back to Hall he'll feed Ayler one time that Ayler had allowed more than two goals this season it was in a three goal allowed effort against Bridgewater But he has certainly benefited from a high-powered offense. And you talk about both these teams trying to establish possession. And it makes it a whole lot easier for the keeper between the posts in turn. Bringing it across, Tucker Leveroni. Ahead for May. Lays it off. This is Noah Carney. He had a goal against WNL. Some contact. No foul. Nothing there. That was all ball. Just look, looked worse than it was. And Noah Carney, the older of the two Carneys in the starting lineup. Isaac starting in the midfield, sophomore. Sent towards Ennis, he gets a foot on it. And blast towards midfield. 
he must have been concerned about that being a pass because I'm not sure why he didn't just pick it up. So getting a touch and just clearing it. Torrey Brown throws in, started every game but one this season. That was against Guilford in the middle of October. Got a and corner. We'll see our first corner. To the near side post, it's Isaac Carney. We just talked about him, sophomore from Charleston, West Virginia. Randolph starting to load up players inside the six yard box. Slow roller from Carney. The other Carney takes the shot. And it was deflected off the leg of Trevor Miller. It's going to roll across the near sideline and stay with Randolph. So we're in that five, six minute window where things will start to settle in for, for one of these two teams. It's that first bit where you're just kind of weathering the storm, and we saw about 50 headers, it seemed like, <laughs> with the ball just in the air. It took the expression of feeling the other team out to a whole new level. Yeah. An insane volley to get us underway. Lynchburg enters as a two seed. Randolph is the four seed, and you mentioned it, coming off the upset win, handing Washington to lead their only loss of the season. Entered that semifinals, the number one team in the country. And it was back and forth all the way through. Ultimately, penalty kick, overtime, game winner from Evan Blow, his 18th score of the year. It was the difference. And then on the other side, Lynchburg coming off consecutive shutouts in their playoff run so far. 4 0 victory against Shenandoah, and then 3 0 over Virginia Wesleyan. Bit of a foul there. He's holding him, so. You're going to get called on that anytime, especially when the ball's already by you. Set piece opportunity daily over the ball. And you want to keep your eyes on both Nick Foley, number 16, and Bailey Kearns, number 19. Kearns was forced to miss the quarterfinal. Was back in the lineup for the semis. And he was all over the pitch. Good clear for Randolph. Goes all the way to Ennis. Wade Hall shows off the nice boot, and the Hornets will reset from the back line. That was a little too close for the coach and me. <laughs> Especially considering you work with the keepers. Yeah. Women's soccer program for Lynchburg. One of those plays that will make you hold your breath. Ayler just in front of Trevor Miller. Sends it to the far side. Daly the first to it. Here's Luke Mega. Four goals so far this postseason. Overall 12 on the year. Just in front of Isaac Carney, now popped up into a beautiful Lynchburg afternoon sky. Now it's Mega in front of Ndembo, tries to center it up, and off the noggin of Wade Hall, and across the end line it goes. Now Lynchburg will have their first corner chance of the day. And that was about what you could hope for in that scenario when there's so many people behind the ball already. Kenny Robles has the honors from the far side post. Here's another look at the play. Mega was able to get some space, and Hall, not much he could do there, but sent it across the end line. Robles, high loft, inside the six-yard box. Wildcats able to get it out of the 18. Nice pass from Dale. Ahead is Robles. He had two scores against Virginia Wesleyan in the semis. Sends it to Ayler. The senior waiting. And that'll officially go down as the first shot of the day for Lynchburg. Lynchburg with a win today would give Coach Chris Yeager his eighth ODAC title. and is now 19 years at the helm for this Lynchburg program. On the other side, Randolph looking for their second tournament title, the first since 2011. It would be the first under fourth-year head coach, Adam Godwin, who has been seemingly everywhere. 
in Lynchburg, played, then coached over at Liberty, shifted over to the American football program for five years as the assistant director of operations and recruiting, then returned to the Liberty soccer programs with the women's team, came here to the University of Lynchburg in 2016 to join Coach Todd Olson and the women's soccer staff of the Hornets, and then went back to Liberty in 2017 before being hired in 2018 by Randolph. Just telling you before the broadcast, even coached my wife over at Liberty for a little bit when, when he was assistant there. And to say that Coach Godwin has coaching experience might be yeah. selling him short. He's yeah. done just about everything, as I mentioned with the football program, director of operations and recruiting. And he's also done a fair amount of fundraising in his number of ventures throughout the city of Lynchburg. And he's done a good job. Leading Randolph to where they are now. Regular season record of 14-2-2, two and 5-2-2 two, two and two in ODAC play. Shalita gets it away to Daly. Senior had two goals, three assists this season. Looking ahead for Mega. And Dembo the first to it. The AR waves the flag. Mega was offside. Look, looked on to me from our angle, but... We'll let you be the judge at home. Yeah, it's hard to see. I guess they, at the last minute, kind of step back, let him go. That 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 kind of series of passes that looked like it was going to develop into something. Mega gets it ahead. Trevor Miller. This is his first collegiate start, and it couldn't have come on a bigger stage. Overall, his 14th game played, has three shots in the season. And when it comes to play style, Miller, probably the closest option that Lynchburg had trying to replicate how Brennan Lagana handles that point striker role. And it's a perfect fit, especially considering he stands in between Kenny Robles and Luke Mega, who can do a lot on their own. Yeah. Flashy dribblers, but also great finesse and know how to get it inside the 18 on those crosses. Yeah, and you, feed players like Miller. You just want him to, to play that big target role where he can receive it at his feet and, and, and dish off of that, play off of that, potentially turn and get guys like those guys out wide through. Um, but it's that, that classic up, back, and through pass that someone big and strong like that needs to be able to, to hold it up. And when they're looking at this game becomes this transition game, which it has the potential to become, to become um, he'll be crucial in being able to play it in right there and try to play off of that. And for those who didn't see it, Brennan Lagana had to leave the semifinal matchup against Virginia Wesley with five minutes or even less to be played against the Marlins. So it was a late but costly injury for Lynchburg. So big roll carved out for Trevor Miller today. Yeah, and he's had, he's had a good year too, Lagana. Oh, Lagana's been very impressive this season. Sophomore from Burlington, North Carolina, but... The pass ahead, it's Randolph with the scoring opportunity. Blow tries to center it up. And cleared away by Griffin Phillips, one of those two very impressive center backs for Lynchburg. Kearns looks long, deflected off the body of Kyle May, throwing for the Hornets. 